This video is brought to you by NordLocker. This is the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air with M2. And this is interesting because for the first time we get a large display in a MacBook Air. And this larger screen makes such a big difference in day to day use, especially in multitasking uh, and generally consuming content. Now today I'm gonna to talk about the differences between the new 15 inch Air as well as the smaller 13 inch MacBook Air as there is more than just a display. And I'll also share with you my general experience using the 15 inch MacBook Air as my main computer over the past month as there's a lot I like and also one thing I don't like. But first I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14. If you want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment with your Instagram username. And then follow me on Instagram at the Schuddeboom, where I'll announce the winner on the 16th of July. Okay, so to start, let's go over the biggest differences uh, between the new 15-inch MacBook Air and the smaller 13-inch MacBook Air. Now, the first is the display. Surprising, I know. Uh, so we're comparing 15.3 inches on the larger model and 13.6 inches on the smaller model. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but actually equates to around 25% more screen space on the 15-inch MacBook Air. And what this means is that all of your content has more room. When using the new 15-inch uh, MacBook Air, I found myself multitasking with two apps open side by side more often. Now, don't get me wrong, you can also do this on the smaller 13-inch MacBook Air, but it always feels a bit cramped, where on the 15-inch MacBook Air, it just feels more comfortable. Or, well, maybe I just need stronger glasses. No, but even if you're just using one app, uh, the larger display means you get more lines of text per page at a time, so that's less scrolling, uh, as well as more menus and layers in creative apps. Plus, things like videos and games just feel bigger uh, and more immersive. And something uh, especially interesting that I found too is that while the bezels and the notch on the 15-inch MacBook Air are technically the same size as on the 13-inch MacBook Air, because the display is larger, their relative size is smaller, making the bezels and the notch appear smaller on the 15-inch model. And then aside from the display, uh, while both the 15-inch as well as the 13-inch MacBook Air both use Apple's M2 chip, the 15-inch Air actually has a 10-core GPU compared to the 8-core GPU that's on the 13-inch model. Now, while this difference is not night and day, there is still a noticeable difference, where in the Geekbench 6 GPU score test, uh, the 15-inch actually scored around 20% better compared to the 13-inch. And something small I really liked about the 15-inch MacBook Air is that it actually comes with a really useful two-port USB-C charger as standard in the box, meaning you can charge both your uh, MacBook as well as your iPhone at the same time. This is great for home, but even better for travel. So just from these differences alone, uh, I can tell you that for just $200 more, the 15-inch MacBook Air does offer a better value package when compared to the 13-inch MacBook Air. You simply get more computer per dollar. But before I get into my experience specifically using the 15 inch MacBook Air, both what I liked and what I liked less, you probably store and send a lot of files, but it is essential to do this safely to protect your data from cyber criminals, surveillance, and malware, especially if you run a business. And this is why you need NordLocker Business, a cloud-based file encryption service that allows you to securely store and share files. With NordLocker, uh, your files are securely encrypted and can be stored on the vault locally or in the cloud, and everything is secured with a master password. NordLocker is also compliant with multiple certificates, including ISO, HIPAA, and the EU GDPR. As a content creator, I work with many different people uh, and brands all over the world and send and receive a lot of files, and NordLocker lets me easily set up roles to make sure that specific data is only accessible to the right people. And then in a wider team, you can easily send files between team members across your business uh, and do so safely. Files are end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning that even if you're sending sensitive files, they are protected from possible interception. I also found that NordLocker doubles as a great way to back up important files and automatically sync them across multiple devices. To add to that, the app and web interface uh, are user-friendly and support all major desktop and mobile platforms. If you're interested in trying NordLocker for your business, be sure to click my link in the description and use code DEONBUSINESS to see NordLocker in action for free with a three month trial. Now, one of the things I enjoy most about the 15 inch MacBook Air is just how thin and light it is. Uh, coming in at just 0.45 inches thick, it is almost the same as the 0.44 inches on the uh, even smaller 13 inch model MacBook Air and much thinner than my 0.61 inch 14 inch MacBook Pro. Speaking of the 14 inch MacBook Pro, uh, the 15 inch MacBook Air, despite being larger with that larger display, is actually lighter. The 15 inch Air is just so easy to lift with one hand, uh, take with you on the go and carry in a backpack. And as a result, I find myself using it more, not just at a desk to do my work, uh, but also say on the balcony uh, to relax or on the couch to watch some videos. 
And then despite the thin uh, and lightweight design, the air still feels really solid, where there is no uh, chassis or display flex under normal use, and the squared off aluminum design, in my opinion, looks really sleek. Now let's talk about the color. So I chose to go for the midnight version and I think in a world uh, of plain black and gray laptops, the midnight color sets itself apart while still being classy. Now I will say though that the midnight color does pick up and show fingerprints. Now I got used to this after a little bit uh, and it doesn't bother me, but it may bother some, in which case I would suggest going for the silver or starlight model. I found the port selection on the 15 inch MacBook Air to be decent. Uh, so you get two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, you get a headphone jack, uh, and then also the MagSafe port. Now the MagSafe port in particular is great, uh, and I guarantee you this will save your Mac at least once from falling off your desk. I would say overall, uh, we get a pretty good port selection on the 15 inch Air, though I do miss having a SD card slot. Now we already talked about the size advantages uh, that you get with this larger display when compared to the smaller MacBook Air, uh, but even on its own, the display on the 15 inch Air is really great to use. So with 500 nits of brightness, I found it to be bright enough for any indoor setting and even to use outdoors on a cloudy day. It is also surprisingly uh, anti-reflective despite it not having a matte coating. It is super sharp and the fact that it is so color accurate means you can actually count on it for editing your photos and videos. And then the keyboard is the same as on the smaller MacBook Air as well as the MacBook Pros. And this backlit Magic Keyboard is super reliable, fast to type on and stable. Uh, I really like it and have no complaints from me. And beneath that, the trackpad is even bigger than on the 13 inch MacBook Air and the smooth glass surface is super satisfying to use when scrolling, uh, pinching to zoom. And because it is so big, when you're clicking and dragging files, you never run out of room. You know what I mean. I found the webcam uh, to be decent. Colors look good, but in low light, uh, it is not the best. However, the microphones though, on the other hand, are actually amongst the best that I've heard in any laptop where your voice sounds very natural and clear. Uh, and it's been great to use for those Zoom calls. All right, so this is a test of using the built-in uh, webcam and microphones on the 15 inch MacBook Air with M2. Uh, I'd say it's a relatively quiet room. I am about, uh, let's say one and a half feet away from the computer. Uh, let me know how it sounds and looks. And then the speakers are even better than on the 13 inch MacBook Air, which are already great. Have a listen. So as you can see or uh, hear, uh, there is some real depth in the sound as well as low end. And this makes it great for watching videos, listening to music, and I've actually even used it uh, to edit some YouTube videos just using the built-in speakers. And I think this is especially impressive since if we look at the sides of the computer, you'll see that there are no speaker grills where the sound actually comes from the hinge of the computer. And this is really smart design. Speaking of smart design, uh, like the 13 inch MacBook Air, the 15 inch MacBook Air is also fanless. And this is awesome uh, because you get silent operation and it's also good for reliability since there's less moving parts, which just means less points of failure. But the question is, how does this affect performance? Now the M2 chip in the 15 inch MacBook Air performs similarly compared to the uh, same chip in the 13 inch MacBook Air with comparable Geekbench 5 CPU test scores, both pulling very strong numbers. But the question is, how does this translate to the real world? Well, on a normal day, I typically run uh, six to eight apps at once with multiple desktops. And for that, the 15 inch MacBook Air never breaks a sweat. It is always fast and responsive. And even things like powering on uh, or waking up from sleep are near instant. And then in heavier apps like Final Cut Pro or Lightroom, uh, two apps that I use every day, the 15 inch MacBook Air performs very well too. Now, don't get me wrong, it is not as fast as my 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro, but definitely faster than the Intel powered MacBook Pros from just a couple of years ago. Let me give you an example. So exporting a 10 minute 4K project from Final Cut Pro took just over six minutes on the 15 inch MacBook Air, which is not far behind my 14 inch MacBook Pro, which did it in five and a half minutes. But to be fair, when it came to rendering and upscaling, the gap does widen significantly, where my 14 inch MacBook Pro was around three to four times faster. Now the 15 inch MacBook Air won't replace the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but this example is more to show that the 15 inch MacBook Air is not only capable of running these pro grade creative apps, it can actually do it really well. I'd say for the occasional 4K edit, the 15 inch MacBook Air is more than capable. And even without a fan, the M2 Air never got hot. Warm, yes, but still comfortable enough uh, to keep on your lap. And during normal mixed day-to-day -day productivity use, uh, it never even gets slightly warm somehow. 
but I do have one concern when it comes to the performance. And this brings me to the one thing that I'm not too fond of, and that is Apple's decision uh, to ship the base model. That's the one that I have, and I think the one that most people buy with just eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, yes, today the 15 inch MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM performs really well. And this is largely thanks to Apple's efficiency and optimization. But at $1,299, this is a big investment that should last. And I can't say with confidence uh, that in the next three, four, even five years down the road, that eight gigabytes of RAM will be enough to keep the same level of performance that we get today. And of course, there is no way to upgrade the RAM in the future. So my advice uh, for the extra headroom and peace of mind, I would say if you're gonna upgrade any spec, go for the RAM. Upgrading to 16 gigabytes will cost just $200, and this should go a long way in ensuring this impressive performance lasts, not just today, but also for years to come, especially when it comes to running multiple apps, uh, switching between apps, and generally running heavier tasks. Okay, back to the good stuff, uh, battery life. Now for me, with mixed productivity use, running both lighter as well as heavier tasks, the 15 inch MacBook Air could easily last me a full working day with around seven uh, to nine hours of screen on time. And with lighter use, I can even go up all the way to two days. All in all, this really is best in class battery life on any laptop and is unlike anything you'll find on the Windows side. Okay, so the final question is, uh, who is the 15 inch MacBook Air for? Well, I think if you're a university student, a business professional who travels often, or simply want a great laptop that delivers in all key areas, the 15 inch MacBook Air with its new larger display, super light and portable yet durable design, uh, incredible Apple Silicon performance, reliability, as well as battery life, comes in an all round package that is gonna be hard to beat or find anywhere else. This really is the best value Mac out right now and is one that I can highly recommend. Anyway guys, uh, those are my thoughts on the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air after one month of using it. Let me know if you have any questions at all guys. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. And if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my long-term review of the smaller 13 inch MacBook Air, as well as my 13 inch MacBook Air versus 14 inch MacBook Pro video, in case you're curious how those compare. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.